Today I'm going to show you how to add images to letters in Silhouette Studio so that you can make wall art and other fun projects using this technique. Let's go ahead and get started. The supplies you will need is your Silhouette Studio software and several images that you want to use inside of your letters. To make the process easier and quicker on you, you want to take your images, put them on your desktop, and move them to the furthest right of your desktop as you can get them. Then you want to line them in a single line. I will show you why when we get to that process in the tutorial. Now what we're doing today, as I said, is we are taking images and putting them inside of letters. Here is an example here that I used with my daughter's name and put different images of her inside of each letter. Now in order for this process to work, you want to work with a bold chunky font. This way you can see your image clearly and you can tell what the image looks like. With this type of image you can use a border with the image, you can use different color borders, you can use a thick border, a thin border. Here in my example of my daughter's name I use just a thin border. Now when I say border, I'm talking about your cut line. Now if you're going to be using a print and cut at home, you are not going to have a border. You're not even going to be able to use that option because if you're doing print and cut, your border per se, being your cut line, will be used as the cut line so it will be cut off so you won't have a border. But now if you are just going to be printing this at home or if you're going to be sending it off to a printers that you're going to be having framed, a border is an option for you to give it a different look. Just have that in mind whenever you're deciding whether or not you want to have a border or not. So if you're doing print and cut, a border around your name or your letters is not an option because it will be cut out. If you are sending this to be printed and you're going to frame it, you do have an option of using a border to give it a different look. Okay. Now not only can you use personalized images in your letters, you could also use cartoon characters as I did here in this example. Now here's another example, not only with the cartoon images, but also with and without a border. Remember as I was saying, border per se, if you will, is also your cut line. So here in the top, the name example bow, our images are cartoon images. The top example is with a border, as you can see, it is a color border and on the bottom is without. Just keep that in mind whenever you're designing this. Again, if you're printing and framing, you have the option of choosing a border. To choose a border, you will do that over here in your cut lines. Your border is actually your cut lines per se, and you have that option, or you can also do without a border. As I said in the beginning, in order for you to put images inside of letters, you will want to have a bold, thick, chunky font so that your images can show clearly. You don't want to use a skinny font because then you won't be able to see your images. What's the point in doing this process if you can't see your images? So here is an example of different fonts that work perfect for this type of project. Now these are just several fonts that I have in my font folders that work well for this project. My font folder, your font folder are both going to vary because we purchase and download different fonts. You may have fonts that differ than what I have. But these that you see here on the screen are free fonts that are available that you can look up online. Some that automatically come with your PC for free. But all the ones that you see here on the screen are free that you can look up that do work well for this type of project. So anyhow, for our tutorial today, we are going to be using Chunk 5 EX, which is this top font here, in our example for the tutorial. So let's go ahead and start on the process. So today I'm going to be using my niece's name. So I'm going to go ahead and type out her name. You want to always do caps. So keep that in mind. We're just going to do the shortened version of her name. Her name is Addison, but we're just going to do Addie. Type out the name. I'm going to highlight it. Come over to the right hand side toolbar to the textile panel. And I'm going to change the font to Chunk 5 EX. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to enlarge the font. Now I've enlarged it larger than I typically would just for the tutorial purposes so that you can see it. Okay, now I've selected my font. When I say selected, that means you will see the little white boxes all around it. 
and I'm going to right click and we're going to ungroup. When we ungroup, this makes each letter its separate piece. So if I click anywhere off of the name, I can select each letter by itself. Okay, now in the beginning, I told you that you will need images that you want to use to put inside of your letters. And to save those images on your desktop and move them to the furthest right of your desktop and put them in a single line. Now the reason why I said this is for easier, quicker access to make this process go quicker. I'm going to show you how to bring in the images quicker. So if you will come up here to the right hand corner of your Silhouette Studio, you will see your minimize button, you will see your two pages in the center, and you'll see your X for your exit button for your studio. You want to click on your two pages in the center one time, and you see how it sort of shortens your studio. Now yours may shorten more, yours may shorten less, either way it shortens it somewhat. If you will take your cursor and move it to the side of your studio, you will see a sideway arrow. And what you're going to do is hold down your left mouse button and you're going to drag it over to the left slightly. And you will see when I do that, you will see my line of pictures that I'm going to be using. I'm going to pick four images out of this line of images of Addy to use for a tutorial today. This gives me quicker access to the images and makes the process go a lot quicker. So now before we pull in our first image, the first thing I'm going to do here in Studio is I'm going to go to my right hand toolbar. I'm going to go right to the transform panel and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to go to the second tab which is our scale window and I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. We're going to be using our percentages to quickly resize any of the images that we may need to when we pull them in. Either way, we have quick access to it. All right, let's go ahead and pull in our first image. So I'm going to go right to my desktop, hold down the left mouse button, choose my image, and just drag it right into Studio, and then let go. As you can see here, my image has a watermark. No problems. It's my watermark. I took the image. Not a big deal. Quick disclaimer, if you have an image that has a watermark and you are not the photographer, please seek permission before you use that image. Please be courteous in that way. Anyhow, so I'm going to be using this image for the letter A, and it just needs to slightly be resized, so I've got the image selected, and I'm going to choose 50%. I'm going to move this image right over my first letter. I'm going to choose a corner node, and I'm going to pull it down just slightly. Now what we want is we want the image to be over the letter and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and we're going to send the image to back that way the letter is over the image we are not going to be moving the letter but we will be moving the image now as you can see here I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just slightly I do have room with the image to where I can shrink the image down just a little bit more and that's what I'm going to do now now what I don't want to happen is I don't want the image to be too small to where I cannot cover any of the edges, like I have any edges that are not covered with the photo. So you want to be careful with that. So I'm going to play around with the image and move it around to where I have enough of the image into the letter to where I'm satisfied with the look of it. Okay, You're not going to get every single aspect of your image into the letter. Just find bits and pieces of your image that you like and that you want to show into your letter. Now, I will not be printing out this image, so I'm going to be okay with some of the watermark coming through. Now, see the way that I have it moved around? I needed to enlarge it a little bit. Now, I'm going to unselect right here. Now, you see right here, The image is not covering the top of the letter the way that I have it positioned. If I were to go ahead and fill the image, the letter with the image, I would be messed up because the top part of that letter would not work. So I needed to play around with that letter some more. Make sure you pay attention to every single part of your letter. Okay. If you need to enlarge it some more, if you need to go down some more, you do what you need to do. Okay. So I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, once you are satisfied with your placement, what you're going to do is you're going to select your image and your letter together, both together. Go to the top, select Object, Modify, 
and cross. And now your image is the shape of your letter. Let's say that you cut your letter out of your image and you decided, oh, okay, I don't like the way that that looks because of the way that the center of the A came out right there where I is. Just go to edit, undo well two shapes and move it around. Do what you need to until you are happy with it, okay? And just redo it. Remember object, modify, crop. And then I'll show you some more things in a few minutes once we get this finished with some more things that you can do to give, have some more creative control. Okay, let's move on to the second letter. Okay, let's come over and do another image. Remember, go to your image, hold down the left mouse button, hold down, pull into studio, let go. As you can see, this one needs to be resized as well. Select your image. We're going to go to 50%. As you can tell, it's going to be need to be resized some more. Go ahead and move it over my letter. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and right click and send it to back. With it still selected, I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller. Pull it up around my letter. Make it a little bit smaller. Remember, pay attention to the sides, top, corners of the letter. I can't stress that enough. Pay a lot of attention to it. Okay, we'll leave that placement like that. Select the letter and the image together. Remember, object, modify, crop. Okay, let's go on with our third one. Left mouse button. Drag into studio, select your image, resize if you need to. Drag your image over the letter of your choice. Right click, send to back. Resize again if you need to. And Place it where you would like to place it. Once you're happy, select both. Object, modify, and crop. Now, this is a fine example where not paying attention, as I was telling you before, to your sides, your tops, your corners. This is what happens. You see right here on this D, where it's supposed to come around and make that curve, I didn't pay attention to the curve right here, so it got cut off. This is what this is what I was talking about. So what I'm going to do, come back, remember, undo edit, and it's right there because I clearly didn't pay attention. In that case, select the image, and you have to be careful whenever your images are in portrait size when you have a wide letter because that is what happened the first time. Sometimes you may choose an image and it just doesn't work for a wide letter, so you may need to choose another. And that is fine. Select both, object, modify, crop. I'm going to leave this like this, even though I'm not satisfied with it, because when I show you the other things that you have creative control over, it's going to give it a different look. So with this, will be okay. All right, let's go ahead and pull in our last image that we're going to use. Remember, left mouse button. Pull it into studio, let go, select the image, resize, pull over the letter that you want to use, right click, send to back, when you're happy, select both, object, modify, and crop, and there you have it. Now, before we go on to the, the other things that you have creative control over with your images, I'm going to show you, if you want to add a border to it, what you would do is you would select all your letters. You would come up to your line style color palette, and you would just select, select what color you would want, and then you would come up to the point. And if I were to select two point, select enter, the point controls how thick or thin the border is. You can play around with your colors and your point. I usually don't do bigger than a two-point border. If I were to do one, I usually stick around 1.25 to a one and a half. Color depends on the theme I'm going for. 
usually when I do these types of words with images, I usually usually send them to a printer such as Staples, Office Max, and have them print them and I frame them at Hobby Lobby. I have them framed in a matted frame and give them as gifts or, you know, they're framed on my wall. It's totally your preference, but this is how you would add a border onto it if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and take the border off while I show you the other things that you can do to it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you the other ways that you can change these images up even after you have inserted them. So we're going to come up to our fill panel. We're going to come over to the third tab, the fill pattern section. Once that opens, you're going to come down and click on advanced options. Once advanced options is open, you will see down on the bottom, you will have an angle option, scale option, and your pan pattern option. These three sections are sections that are going to give you different creative control options for your images that you have inserted into your letters. Okay, let's take this second D that I said I wasn't happy with the placement, but I was okay with it. I was going to use it to show you some things. With the scale pattern, right now the image is at 100%. I want to make it lower, so what I'm going to do is just take the slider and go down some. But now as you see as I'm going down, it's starting to repeat the image. Okay. You see how the image is starting to repeat? That gives you just a little bit more control and a different look for your image. Let's take Addie in the first image and let's do the same thing. Let's pull her down some. You see how it's starting to show even though we cropped the letter with the image, it's still showing the full image. So we have every other letter as a repeat image. And then if we came up to angle, we could angle the image to the left and we could angle the image to the right if we wanted to. All right, and let's say, let's go to the Y. In order to use pan pattern, you wanna select your letter first. So we're gonna select the letter Y. Then you would come down and select pan pattern. So when you click pan pattern, you'll see the four way arrow in the center of the letter that you have chosen. So you have to click on the four way arrow, then it lets you move that image. So if you didn't like the placement where you had put it, you can move that image and place it somewhere else. So we could put her here. Now once you let go of it, that's it, unless you clicked pan pattern again. Okay, so that just gives you more creative control over your images inside of your letters. And that's it. That is how you put images inside of letters. The hardest part is choosing what font you want to use and what images you want to put inside of them. And I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that this gives you another item that you can add to your business or that you can put on your uh, Christmas DIY list to give to your family and friends. And if you have any comments, questions, and or concerns, please feel free to contact me anytime here on YouTube. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Feel free to contact me on Facebook, on my Facebook group, Our Crafty Chaotic Life. You can email me at rcraftychaoticlife at gmail.com. And if you haven't already, please feel free to share, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting!